so today we will be talking about um, sports in Zambia. We'll be looking at the administration, funding, policy, and structures in Zambia. They said sports is a global, um, global tool and everybody's playing sports. But when it comes to administration and approach, I'm pretty sure each country has a way of doing it. And today we are flying all the way to Zambia, a very popular um, country in Africa and recently have a very successful election. And today I will be talking to a gentleman. He's a very good friend and brother from Zambia. We've been together in Korea before. And he will introduce himself shortly. But the discussions with him will be, uh, the nature of the discussion will hinge on providing um, sport education and insight with regards to um, topics that will be uh, discussing soon. He'll tell us about his journey, sports in Zambia, administ administering the National Sports Federations, and about the Sustainable Development Goals in Sports, which has been um, very common in most countries' policy. So without much ado, um, my guest will just tell you about himself. Who is he? Thank you. And it's a great honor to have you. So can you tell us about yourself? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Derek, for having invited me to uh, this interview just to uh, share about uh, the sports structures in my country and also how the funding happens, you know, to these uh, national sports associations and federations. So I'm very delighted uh, that you thought about Zambia and um, I'm very happy that I have the opportunity to share uh, what goes around uh, here. So I'm Nicholas Chipeta. Formerly, I work in the Ministry of uh, General Education of my country as the head of the uh, Expressive Arts Department at uh, Tonga Secondary School. Additionally, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of an, of an organization called Seni Fitness Services, which is an organization that uh, promotes community participation and engagement in uh, physical activities. Furthermore, I also do some uh, part-time lecturing uh, in universities here in my country in uh, sports-related uh, uh, studies. Academically, I have a bachelor's degree in sports and physical education from the International School of Sports and Physical Education in the Republic of Korea. And uh, I also have a master's degree in uh, sports management uh, from Seoul National University in South Korea, where I met with uh, Mr. Derek. Right now, I'm the head of the Expressive Arts Department at uh, Chonga oh, Secondary okay. School. At the, same, at the same time, of course, I'm a sports uh, instructor. So professionally, I was trained as a you know a sports and physical education teacher and instructor. So I also have a heart for you know teaching and uh, coaching sports and physical education. Uh, the sport that I'm interested in the most is uh, football, but I, I'm also very much uh, engaged in uh, you know promoting community participation in a physical activity. So I like bringing the community together and just uh, make them, you know, exercise. I come from a community where, you know, there are no public facilities for people to exercise and, you know, engage in an active lifestyle. And if I told there are any gyms, you know, gym membership fees are pretty high and that, uh, you know, inhibits many people from actively engaging in a, uh, physical exercises. So when I returned from, uh, you know, South Korea, after being inspired by, you know, uh, sport for development, specifically the uh, aspect of health, I wanted to, you know, overcome these barriers and just come up with um, uh, a platform that would easily engage people, you know, without the use of complex uh, gym equipment and without the use, you know, of sophisticated ways of exercising. So I came up with a platform, which I call Any Fitness, which engages people to exercise and that's what I'm doing and I, I really love it and I hope uh, it grows. But apart from that, as I've mentioned already, I'm a teacher. I teach uh, physical education and sports at secondary school level and I also have chances to do some part-time lecturing at a uh, university level. So uh, basically that's what I do uh, in the field of sports. Well, that's that's such um, a work, uh, coupling the um, work from the ministry and then to having your own program as an instructor yes, in the community that's that's uh, very inspiring and um, yes. briefly if somebody asks you can you share your professional journey to becoming a sports um, leader or a manager in a, in a field that is considered very very narrowed in terms of job opportunities 
Okay, so um, I would love to state uh, from the word go, you know, uh, back in high school, I never really loved sport and I never, you know, sport was not really in my heart. Yes, I would watch some sports activities, but personally getting engaged and doing sport uh, was not really in me. I loved so much, you know, like studying my books and I uh, wouldn't want to go outside to the uh, playing fields to do any kind of sport. I, I thought that was like a waste of time and it didn't have uh, a lot of meaning. So that was uh, how I was, um, you know, how I was, how I was brought up and how my, my school days were. I was not so much involved uh, in sports. And after I finished uh, high school, you know, my dream was to study, you know, science related uh, courses, something like maybe uh, medicine or, you know, biology such kind of things. I loved science a lot. So I wanted to do anything related to science, physics, chemistry, but more especially biological sciences. But after I finished high school, you know, uh, it became a little bit difficult for me for, it became difficult for me to find an opportunity to do, you know, what I really wanted to do, which was science or medicine or such kind of things. So uh, I got a little bit frustrated because I stayed like uh, maybe two years after completing high school for me to get into a university for me to pursue what I really wanted. So, you know, after I'd, uh, you know, found challenges in pursuing what I wanted, I, you know, uh, had an open mind and I said, you know, whatever opportunities that to present themselves, I'll go for them and I'll go in that direction. So that's how I ended up, you know, getting a scholarship to study in the Republic of Cuba. That was in, uh, in 2007. You know, I completed high school in 2005 and I only managed to get an opportunity to go to university in uh, 2007. So when uh, I applied for that scholarship, actually there were several options, but um, I thought maybe I would not get some good chances in other fields. So I decided to go for sports because, you know, sports in, uh, in Africa, more especially at that time, always had a negative perception. So very few people wanted to apply for such kind of fields. So I applied for sports and physical education, not really because I wanted to do it, because it was just a strategy, a strategy for me to, you know, get the scholarship and, uh, you know, go and study. And um, uh, I was very privileged. Yes, I got uh, the opportunity to go and study in Cuba. My country offered me the scholarship. But what I had in mind was once I arrived in Cuba, you know, I find my ways of escaping from sport and physical education and still go into what I really wanted to do, which was uh, science or something like that. So I went to Cuba. And I tried to escape from physical education, but unfortunately, I couldn't work out. Uh, you know, the systems were rigid. Once you go for the field that you're supposed to do, you have to do it. So that's how I got stuck with uh, physical education <laughs> and sport. And that's how it started. So uh, in the first years, you know, of my, uh, my, 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 my field of study in sport and physical education, they were not easy because I had still not accepted what I really wanted to do. You know, so I was doing it, but not with a happy heart but as time yeah. went by i went to second year i started understanding what sport is i started understanding its importance i went to third year and the passion just came naturally i'd never done sports before i was not an athlete like maybe some of my friends but i started learning how you know sport works how you can train people in sports how you can teach sports and such kind of things and i just loved it and that's how my journey in sports you know started just from cuba and I came back, I've been, uh, I started working in sports. I became a teacher of physical education and sport. And that's how it was started. I got other opportunities to further my studies, you know, and do a, a master's degree in sports management. And now uh, it's all about sports. Everything I do, I still have yeah. dreams to do, but, you know, pursuing my studies in this uh, sports field. So uh, that's how it all started. And that's where it is right now. <laughs> well, you've said it's that easy. But I, I just want to, uh, for viewers to know that you, you, Zambia is an English speaking country. You went to Cuba. Yes. And then you went yes. to Korea from frying pan to fire. Adapting yes. to different languages. And has, has it been worthwhile given these challenges and all that? Yeah, sure. I would say it has been uh, worthwhile. I think um, all the opportunities I've had, uh, they are unique and uh, they've taught me a lot. The opportunity had to be in Cuba, which is a country very different from uh, our countries here. Firstly, of course, uh, the language itself is a Spanish speaking country. So I had to adjust to the language and just uh, the culture, everything. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, yeah, it's in the Caribbean, it's a Spanish speaking country. So uh, it was difficult uh, in the beginning, but uh, 
um, really I enjoyed every, every experience. It was a good thing to learn different culture, to learn a different language. And uh, yeah. I was in an international school, so uh, you know, I had uh, the opportunity to interact with people from different countries, you know, all over the world. So that was awesome. Also in Korea, I went, again, it was a different culture, a Korean speaking country, <laughs> you know, different culture, Asian culture. It was my first time, you know, uh, to live for a long time in, uh, in Asia. Of course, I'd gone to China before, but I'd not lived there for a long time, like the way I lived in Korea. So it was an awesome experience. I think I don't regret any moment, yeah. Well, so um, viewers, that's it. Nicholas sharing his vision and his um, um, history with its um, with with, with, this, with with sports. Uh, often, people think it's very easy, especially when you move your country to a different place. You have to learn a language, learn a culture, um, as well as holding steadfast to your own culture, bringing it back home, and then giving back to society. So on that, um, what advice do you have for young people aspiring to be in sport managers, instructors, or leaders? I often receive messages of, should I still do sports or um, something else in, in, in brief? Yes, so um, I would really advise them to go for it if uh, they really want to do it. You know, sport and physical education is more than uh, what... Uh, people think it is in the society. There are so many things that, uh, you know, uh, happen in the field of sport. And you can use sport for, you know, so many things. You know, in sport are the science, in sport there are politics, in sport there's they are just, you know, uh, limitless uh, opportunities. So um, really, I would, I would advise them to go for it. They'll understand later that really you can become anything that you want to become in sports. Okay, so now let's zoom straight to the main topic for our discussion today. We look at the sports in Zambia, and here we are going to disintegrate it's, uh, the state sports institutions, agencies, and governance. And just to let you know, um, Nicolas um, has been in this industry for a very long time and has climbed the ladder, the educational ladder, and with regards to sport management in Zambia as well. So the question is, is there a designated sport ministry or otherwise in Zambia? Okay, so uh, yes, we do have the ministry of uh, sport in Zambia, but uh, it is combined with uh, other, you know, uh, departments, or I would say ministries, but really it's just one ministry, which is called the Ministry of Youth, Sport and uh, Child Development. So, you know, there's also the aspect of youth, and uh, child development in it. But yes, we do have a ministry which is, you know, designated for this uh, uh, task of sport. Yes, um, that's a very, um, not too different from most countries around the globe, and especially in Africa. And um, under, these minist under the, uh, the ministry, uh, what are some of the agencies and departments under the, um, the ministry you just mentioned, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Gender? Okay. Actually, it's called the Ministry of Youth, Sport, and Child Development, not really gender. So um, uh, as the ministry is called, you know, there is a department of uh, sport, then there's a department of youth, you know, youth development, and there's a, de uh, there's a department of uh, child uh, development. So anyway, our focus is more on the, you know, department of uh, sport. So under the, uh, the department of sport, you know, there are different uh, programs there. Okay, there are programs for uh, sport education. There are programs for uh, women uh, in sport. There are programs on uh, anti-doping and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, basically the ministry has got the Department of Sport Development, which has got different, different programs which are uh, run all, all around the country. Yeah, and um, is there any connection with um, other ministries like Ministry of Education, which also runs the school sports and all that? How does that play? Yes. So uh, according to our sports policy, you know, uh, the Ministry of uh, Sport has to network with uh, other ministries. And really, you know, sport cannot um, just be fully run with uh, the Ministry of Sport. They must be, you know, networking with uh, other ministries. So some of the ministries that I would highlight, which work in, uh, in close 
collaboration with uh, the Ministry of Sport and the Ministry of General Education, because you know the Ministry of General Education uh, is the one which is responsible for you know primary education and secondary education in my country. And there are a lot of you know these young children who need to do physical education and sport, and they also have their own competitions. So there's that uh, collaboration also with uh, the Ministry of Health, you know, sport and exercise very cut you know, in uh, you know improving the health and well-being of the people so there's also that collaboration also the ministry of uh, community development you know sport has to be taken to the community so the ministry of community development also has its own uh, role and uh, responsibility in ensuring that uh, you know the community has what it needs to have to you know successfully run sport so yes there's a collaboration with uh, different uh, ministries just to ensure that uh, the objectives of uh, you know, the, the ministry and the policy are achieved. Yes, so that's just to show that sports do not operate in isolation and that there is networking and collaborations with other ministries as it uh, happens in various countries. And I like the aspect of the community development, which you've been falls in line with your sports for development program that you oh, spoke yes. about. So, sure. so there's actually, always that link. Still, yeah, actually I'm still, you know, working on my on my on my program and uh, the idea that I have, so I also intend to you know do these uh, collaborations because uh, I cannot I, I cannot also succeed uh, on my own and I cannot work independently. I think there must be networking because all these things are things which you know can work, uh, can uh, be stronger when the this collaboration. So you yeah, put it well, really. I must uh, coordinate with uh, all these other ministries. Yeah. Well, the next question is. Um... How do sports structures in Zambia look like in terms of how is sports um, administration cascaded from the national, regional, and then to the communities? What are the sub-national structures? Okay, so uh, as we started with the Ministry of Youth and, uh, and the Ministry of Sport, Youth and Child Development, really it starts from all there. So uh, the Ministry uh, of Sport, is, uh, is really on top, you know, it's the, the government ministry. So it's the government itself, which is um, mandated, you know, to uh, implement the policy, the sports policy, and uh, also coordinate it. So it starts from there. The Ministry of, of Sport is uh, on top of everything. But uh, from the Ministry of Sport, we have what we call the National Sports Council. So the National Sports Council works in a collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Sport you know, in uh, implementing the, the policies which have been made. And also it is the National Sports Council, which also works in close collaboration with the Ministry of Sports to ensure that, uh, you know, there's a resource mobilization and to ensure that uh, different organizations which run sport in Zambia are funded. So we have the Ministry of Sport, then we have the National Sports Council of Zambia. Then uh, from there, we have, uh, you know, the National uh, Olympic, uh, we have the National Olympic Committee, okay, uh, of Zambia, which is, uh, you know, responsible for uh, Olympic sports, okay, so that's the one which is responsible for ensuring that Zambia participates, you know, successfully at the Olympics, ensuring that, you know, athletes are training adequately, ensuring that, you know, coaches are being trained, programs which are prepare athletes, and so on and so forth. Then we also have the National Paralympic Committee of Zambia, which operates under the uh, International Olympic Committee Charter, which is also responsible for, you know, Paralympic sport. Then we have, you know, the uh, different, you know, sports associations and federations. In Zambia, we have over 42 uh, sports associations. So these sports associations are the ones now which are responsible uh, for, uh, specific disciplines so we have a sports association for football uh, you know we have a sports association for basketball and all, and all these other sports so these sports associations are the ones which are actually very key in ensuring the development of each and every sport uh, which uh, they deal with uh, on the ground they are the ones which really implement you know the development programs uh, of their sports then we also have you know sports associations for schools which are responsible for running of sports in a, uh, in primary and secondary schools. We also have, you know, the uh, university sports associations, which are in charge of uh, university sports. Okay. Then in the same structure, we also have, you know, uh, the private sector. 
as we are discussing earlier on, you know, sport cannot uh, operate, you know, just uh, independently. It needs to have that collaboration even with the private sector. So there are so many private organizations in the corporate world, you know, the banks and just private organizations, which are very key in helping in the development of sports. Some, you know, offer their sports facilities. Some even have athletes, which they have to release, maybe if they are sports competitions. So there's that collaboration. Others act even as um, sponsors of our sports uh, development programs in Zambia and so on and so forth. And also in the same structure, we have uh, the media, which is very, very key in promoting sports, you know, ensuring that people know about sports and also, you know, preaching the importance of participation in sport and physical education uh, publicly. So um, uh, all those, uh, components they fall under you know the structure of the Zambian uh, sports system so really on top we just have the Ministry of Sport then we have the National Sports Council and all these other you know structures which uh, all coordinate together so that's how that's what it looks like in Zambia yep and um, in Zambia I guess is it, is it divided into regions or provinces I guess it's provinces yes right? we have provinces Yes, and um, so from the national level, the, are there structures at the provinces and into the district level as well? Yes, so uh, the Ministry of Sport is the one which is uh, really in charge of, uh, you know, sending its personnel to different uh, regions or provinces of my country. So at the, the headquarters, you know, the, at the actual Ministry of Sport, we have uh, sport development officers there, but also each province has... Um, uh, a sport uh, development officer, or we can call them as sport coordinators. So each province has got a sport coordinator who is attached to the Ministry of Sport. Yeah. But uh, I must confess really that um, it's still being worked on. Uh, uh, it's not all the provinces which have uh, the sport coordinators, but um, uh, under normal circumstances, each and every province must have a sport coordinator. And from the Ministry of Sport, I think the uh, the officers in that provincial level. So the Ministry of Sport does not send, you know, uh, uh, officers at district level. So the, uh, the decent uh, decentralization ends at a uh, provincial level from the Ministry of Sport. Then are also oh. the, the national sports associations themselves, they are also mandated to have structures which, you, you know, will be at provincial level and district level, but uh, it's not for the associations which are managed or which have successfully implemented that. Yeah, we will, we will get to the national um, sports associations and then the uh, Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Um, yeah. But for the meantime, let's look at the government structure. So if I get you correctly, uh, you have the uh, Ministry, of, um, Ministry of Youth, um, Child Water. and Sports, right? Ministry of Sports, um, Youth and Child and and then you have the um, Zambia National Commission of Sports, isn't it? Yes, it's called the National yes. Sports Council. Yes. The National Sports Commission. And then you have in Ghana, we call it the National Sports Association. It used to be Council. Commission, then Council, then now Authority. The name just keeps changing every time. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we also have the regions. We used to have 10, now it's 16 regions with all directors. And then, um, so you, you said not all the provinces has, um, have, what's the name, their, uh, coordinators. Right? At yes. Level. yes. So at the, pro at, the, at the provincial level, um, they are supposed to go to the districts. Is that the understanding I'm getting? Yes, but we do not, as I mentioned, we do not really have the officers at the uh, district level. According to the existing structure, it ends at a um, provincial level, but um, level. Uh, yes, there are still works which are being done. So probably in the near future, we may have uh, officers at district level, but for now, yeah. the structures just end at a uh, uh, provincial level. That is from the Ministry of Sport. Yeah, it, it's always sometimes um, funding and all these structures have always been an issue. But um, just um, to share with you, I know there are some countries that um, take advantage of the local government or community development ministry yes. um, offices. And then within these offices have sports structures that also do report to the, um, the provincial or the regional offices. And sometimes even at the district level, you realize that at this community development ministry or in some countries, the local government 
and ministries, you would definitely have people from education, from health, yeah. and from sport and, and sports uh, who come together to um, deliver services to the community. So um, it is interesting to to know that that um, and Zambia is still under construction with regards to some of these um, structures. Anyway, moving yeah. forward. Um, uh, how many provinces have Zambia for the we benefit have, uh, of the business? Ten we have 10 provinces right now. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. So the next question is, I mean, um, let me know, um, are the structures, the structures, that's the provincial structures for the, the ones functioning, are they autonomous or regulated at the national level? Okay, so... Uh, the officers from the Ministry of Sport who are found at a uh, provincial level, uh, definitely they are attached to the ministry. Okay, so they are under the, the ministry. So even uh, their loyalty has to be known to, to the ministry. But uh, in terms of reporting, they will report you know, to the provincial uh, you know, uh, officers, we call them the permanent secretaries, but uh, they may also directly report to them Ministry of Sport. So they may report, you know, in two ways to the provincial permanent secretaries, whatever they are doing in, in, in relation to their duties. And also they may report uh, directly to, uh, to the Ministry of Sport. So yeah. um, for, for the sports coordinators from the Ministry of Sport, uh, I wouldn't say they are really uh, autonomous. I think their activities are, are regulated by the ministry itself. So okay. uh, they are not really independent, like they have to do uh, whatever they do, they have to, uh, yeah. yes, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in once again, in Ghana, it's similar, but that's why the name keep changing. From commission, meaning regulated by the state, to council, okay. meaning the ministry councils it to authority. So the National yes. Sports Authority now is supposed to operate autonomous, but there's still an issue. This is casted in law, which is the sports law. But yes. then in Ghana, they said they still need a legal instrument, you know, mm -hmm. approved by parliament, consented by the president, so this national sports authority can act independently. But it's there's there are still questions as to whether they are acting independently. It's more or less operating like a commission or even a council, like in Zambia now, even though it has the yeah, yeah. authority. Yeah, I, I, I get your point. <laughs> <laughs> interesting so um, the next question is um sports policy or sports law do do you have do zambia has a sports policy or sports law anyhow you call it yes yeah, so we have uh, a sports policy i think that's what is uh, more pronounced yeah so we have uh, a sports policy which has been uh, under reforms and i think if i'm not mistaken the recent one was uh, uh revised in uh, 2012 so yes we have a sports policy which is um, well elaborated but uh, personally I feel maybe some of uh, the duties of uh, like uh, the, um, the the structures you know some maybe they they collide some uh, some may be the same from my own view but uh, definitely we have uh, a, a sports policy which uh, is being implemented and then what is the focus of this um, sports policy to some? It's um, elite to some, it's um, um, amateur sport and others, um, which has been the case, focuses on the social value of sport. In the case of Zambia, what, what is the main objective or focus of the, of the policy? Okay, so uh, I would say our policy really encompasses, uh, you know, many, many aspects of, uh, of sport. So there's the aspect of, you know, elite sport, there's the aspect of, uh, grassroots uh, sports so like from the ministry of um, uh, sport there are some programs there's a program which focuses on uh, elite sport which is called a uh, podium performance but we are we also have programs which uh, just focus on a uh, community sport and there are programs which also focus on a uh, you know grassroots uh, sport so um, i would say it really encompasses uh, on uh, all these uh, aspects as they yeah. are all very very uh, important. So um, it focuses uh, uh, on all of them, I would say, elite sport, uh, grassroots sports, community sport, all of them are uh, I focus in the policy. Yeah. Now now let's look at this. Um, I know it will be a little bit tricky for our um, listeners, but let's look at it this way. Um, the sports policy you mentioned, let's maintain a sports policy. It could also be yeah. people, people see policies as laws, but 
the one that you just mentioned, has it gone through parliament and consented by the executive so that it becomes a law that the ministry has to follow? Well, at that level, uh, I'm not very sure if it has uh, gone to, to parliament yet. But uh, as I know, I would say it has, uh, it has not yet. So, because um, as I mentioned, it is still under reforms. The, the last one, I think, was, um, was attended to in, uh, in 2012. So, I'm not okay. very sure if, uh, if that is the final one. So, uh, I wouldn't comment much on, on that. One. On that, yeah. So, which means that I get the impression there's a new policy, there's a bill, which is currently under reform, right? Yes, yes. Okay, but previously the old sports policy you had, has it, did it go through parliament and consented by the executive and it became a legal instrument for the ministry? Yeah, being a, a legal instrument, uh, it was because yeah. um, anyway, it was verified, like that's the way all the policies are yeah. made. So it was a legal instrument which was uh, being followed, but after observing that it had some uh, lacune here and there, they yeah. decided to do uh, some reforms which are happening. So yeah. it was a legal instrument which uh, was being uh, followed. Yeah, so um, for, for all those who do not understand these complexities, once the whatever guideline or policy or anyhow you call it goes to parliament, consented by the executive, which is the president, then it becomes a law, so a sports law, which means the ministry is obliged to follow these um, things, the, the, all the things written within the the sports law. Now, after the law comes, the law, the sports law is usually very small documents given areas of importance. Mm -hmm. Now, to give a very extensive guideline how these areas are going to be executed is what is called policy. So policy provides guideline. And then this is for the benefits of our um, listeners. Often, a lot of countries fail to have the policy. They may have the law, but a policy that provides guidelines that says that national sports, uh, national sports association, this is what we are going to do. Provincial level, this is what we are going to do. Regional level, this is what we are going to do. When national teams travel, this is what we are going to do. You know, it spells details into how the laws will be executed. So know the difference, that's what sports law is. And then we have the policies. So in a nutshell, you may not follow the policy, and you would never be held accountable. But if you break the law, you will be held accountable. And sometimes to make some of the policy guidelines work and to commit the ministry or the people to execute such guideline, you need a legal instrument to ensure that. So, well, that's just by the way. And Nicholas, thank you so much for sharing yes. that one and breaking it down for us. And the, the next question is, um, is there a particular national sport for Zambia? I know this, but I have to ask you, is there a particular national sport celebrated all over? Yes, uh, definitely. Almost all the countries have you know, their national sport and Zambia definitely has one. And uh, that sport is uh, soccer. Here we just <laughs> call it uh, football. The okay, you know, in other countries they would want to say soccer, but in Zambia we like use we prefer using the term uh, football. So that is football, our national yeah. sport. You find it everywhere. Kids will be playing in the compounds. Uh, you can play it on the roads. Just where, wherever you find some space, that is the sport that you always see. Wherever you go, you will find it. That's a, that's our national sport and the most. Okay popular sport and also the most funded sport and the most ah. followed sport. <laughs> yeah. So viewers, here you are. I mean, for those who follow football, you would you would definitely know Chipolopolo. I, I guess all the things you mentioned regards to government institution and structure, are they solely funded by government or there's uh, they also government do get support from private um, sector? Okay, so the, the Ministry of uh, Sport and National Council, these two institutions really, they are the ones which are, have the, the mandate of uh, mobilizing resources. You know, the ministry will lobby for funds from the, you know, the government, yeah. this government itself, you know, and once the, the monies are there, the National Sports Council, you know, uh, disperses the money to different uh, sports associations and uh, different, uh, you know, structures so that sport uh, can run. So the government, yes, has got the duty to fund these uh, sports associations, 
but uh, I will be very frank with you. Uh, the, the funding is not uh, adequate enough to run uh, all the, you know, uh, all the activities that these uh, sports associations have. So also the National Sports Associations and uh, other organizations, the National Olympic Committee, the National Paralympic Committee, they also have, you know, duties of, um, you know, looking for their own funds. Also at their level, they need to do some uh, resource mobilization. They can engage international sports associations. They can engage national sports federations. They can engage the private sector. If uh, that does not happen, um, they cannot operate successfully. There would be so many, so many gaps. But uh, as I mentioned, also the funding that the government does um, somehow looks at the sport, which is uh, very popular, I would say, and uh, the sport maybe which also produces results. That's why I said that uh, uh, in my country, the sport which is um, well-funded, I think uh, even from the time that we had our first Republican president, uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, may you oh, rest in peace, just passed away. Uh, so from those times, yeah, it is football which has been very prominent and it's football which has been uh, funded. Yeah, we know us who do sports that sports also is used as, you know, uh, a tool for political uh, propaganda and so many things. So um, probably it could be one of the reasons, but anyway, sport has been popular. We have won the Africa Cup. So there's always, you know, the, uh, the motivation to fund it since it brings a lot of people together, it unites people together. So it attracts a lot of attention compared to these other sports. Well, that's interesting. Is sports an end in itself or means to an end? And I think that's what some support Nicholas said. It sometimes could be a tool for political um, agenda. And um, yes. sometimes you don't really need results because sports in itself is results. And um, when you have a mandate to ensure that people in the community are active, People in the community are engaging in worthwhile, uh, worthwhile activities like Nicholas does um, with his um, personal program. Then um, I'm not sure if you expect some other results again, if sports in itself is the end or the result. But that's the realities we find ourselves with state run sports. Um, I wouldn't want to delve into that complexity. This is just to inform and educate people to understand how sports is managed or administered or funded and how the structures are in elsewhere. You had mentioned the National Sports Authority and um, we would zoom into that very well to look at the, sorry, the National Sports Associations, I beg your pardon. The national, and we'll zoom, okay. you, we will zoom into the National Sports Association, their, their relationships with government. And often there are a lot of objectives on the table or the policy table, but Funding is always an issue. Some people think funding is not an issue. It's just that funding is skewed to support some associations. So um, my question is this, with whom do the national sports associations hold allegiance to if there's government and there's international um, sports federations in Zambia? Well, I would say uh, to the National Sports Council, because, uh, you know, the, according to the, the structure that we have, you know, it is even the National Sports Council, which uh, has got the, uh, the, the right or the power to, you know, to register some of these sports associations, to monitor what they are doing, to monitor if they are complying with uh, what is uh, in, the, uh, in the policy. So uh, they, I would say they pay their allegiance to to the National Sports Council because that is what is directly linked to them. I know when it comes uh, to funding also the International Sports Associations, they, uh, they play a big role. But uh, at national level, I would say uh, the National Sports Council is really what you know monitors what they do. And therefore, I would say that's where they pay their allegiance to. And um, by that, um, have there been history of um, um government interference and where national sports associations have reported government to um, to the international sports federations, which has been the case in recent times with Ghana, Kenya, I think Togo as well, Nigeria, Indonesia, the list go on and on and on, Greece, 
and on and on like that. Yes, so I would say the interference uh, is there. Of course, uh, sport perfectly must be an autonomous, uh, uh, you know, entity. The sports associations they must work uh, autonomously. But uh, in most cases, as you have mentioned, even in other countries, you have already given some examples. It doesn't uh, happen that way because sport, you know, is also an uh, an agenda for you know for the country and. Uh, uh, for the for the government, the politicians. So uh, even in my country, it has been very difficult for you know politicians not to uh, for politicians to leave sport you know to operate autonomously. So yes, there has been some uh, interference, but I would say only uh, very prominent uh, sports associations uh, have received the interference. Those which are not prominent, which are very quiet which are not maybe very popular and which don't produce a lot of results. For those, definitely, uh, the government would not want to interfere in them because they, they are not uh, doing much. But uh, those which are popular, like in my country, as I mentioned, football, definitely the government has got uh, eyes on the, uh, on the Football Association of Zambia. And uh, in many instances, there have been, uh, you know, uh, interference and there have been even moments when you know, political leaders have given instructions, you know, to the, uh, you know, the presidents of the associations to do one or two things here and there. So the interference uh, is there, but more especially only on uh, uh, prominent associations. At what point do government decide to fund the national sports associations? Is it always yearly or when there is time for competition? Okay, so uh, definitely every year there's a there's a budget and there's some budget which is uh, you know allocated to to sport, but uh, the funding I would say uh, happens when these national sports associations you know present their budgets maybe because they are running a certain uh, program they present their budgets to the national sports council. Then at that time, now the National Sports Council would evaluate those budgets and look what they are doing. And uh, if they find it fit and if they have the, av the available resources, uh, you know, uh, they would do it. So as far as I know, uh, I think it depends on the National Sports Associations, you know, if they have programs and they have budgets uh, for those. So uh, as far as I know, also the budgets of these National Sports Associations uh, probably they are not presented uh, in good time. So maybe if uh, a national sports association in a certain month decides to organize some programs, they can just take the budget to the National Sports Council and say, we have this that we are doing, so we are asking for funding. If there's funding, they would be given. And um, if it's not there, yeah, then maybe they would have to source it from, uh, from other, you know, sources. So the funding mm -hmm. is there, but I feel depends so much uh, on, the, on the National Sports Associations, what they are doing. But definitely when there are competitions, I think that's when the funding is, uh, uh, is more prominent. Yeah. Now, let me ask this question, since you are a community person, um, what's your take? And this has nothing to do with what is written in policy or whatever, but what's your take on government's heavy funding on the National Sports Associations when there are a lot of community projects within the community where young people can be engaged, where old people can be engaged in sports and physical activity. What's your take on that? Because un usually there is no funding at all and there's no program to get these people involved. But um, you and I have been in some countries before and we know their community projects, you know, their programs rolled out where the older people can just stop by a community and train. Do you get it? So um, what's, what's your take on this? Yeah, and you know, actually, that is uh, really my passion, and um, I hope uh, in the near future, I would uh, contribute so much to um, community sport. You know, I'm so much in, uh, I'm so I'm so interested in, uh, you know, sport for all, where everyone can just come, you know, in one platform, and just participate in physical activity, just for their well-being, you know, their health. And also for the purpose of, you know, community connectedness, bringing people together, 
in the community, you know, that is really my passion. And I'm really working hard towards that. I hope in the future it could, uh, it could break out and it could be big. What you have said is, uh, is very true. You know, at community level, as far as I know here in my country, I cannot spot out any community, uh, you know, uh, physical exercise program or a community a sport program maybe which runs uh, effectively and engages uh, the masses. Personally, I would say those programs are not there. I know at, uh, uh, at the Ministry of Sport and even in our policy, we have the, the aspect of community sport, but uh, on the ground, people really are not uh, engaged. And, uh, you know, we come from uh, third world countries, you know, poor countries. So uh, if I told there are gyms, gyms, you know, are businesses and uh, they're expensive to run. So, and uh, it's also expensive to, you know, to pay for membership fee for you to go to a professional gym. Uh, there are for a lot of people, you know, experienced barriers, you know, to engage and participate in a yeah. physical activity. So if you come on the ground, there are very few people really who exercise on a regular basis. And yeah. uh, therefore, I would say that um, the government also, as it funds, you know, these sports associations, maybe which but which you compete at an um, elite level. Of course, they also have their own grassroots programs, but I feel so much attention must be, you know, given to the community. As I mentioned, I come from a community where there are no public, you know, exercise or sports facilities. They are not there. And that is a story almost everywhere in my country. I know like where we were in South Korea and even in Cuba, they are just parks which are public. They have put some, you know, installations where people can exercise. So, you know, such kind of, you know, facilities, they engage the community, even if you don't want to exercise, but okay, there is a park where you can go and do this, or there's this program, you can go and do this, you know, it engages and encourages people to exercise. But if such facilities yeah. are not there, there are no any programs to engage the people, yeah. and then community exercise programs and sports uh, really die. So there must be great focus on our community sport, really. Yeah, well, I think that um, in, in, in countries, um, so-called third world countries or countries where the mortality rate is very low, uh, I think um, exercise and sports or physical activity should be a priority. And I hope that the um, current reformation of the sports policy will take this into consideration. And um, I mean, the, the next question is this, often, the National Olympic and Paralympic Committee has a dotted line relationship with the Ministry of um, Sports in most countries. What, what is the case in, in Zambia? Do they have a straight line relationship or direct relationship or an indirect relationship like the National Sports Associations, the Olympic and Paralympic Committee? Okay, so uh, I would say the because uh, then with the National Olympic Committee, you know, it operates under the International uh, Olympic Committee Charter. Yeah. But uh, according to our structure, the National Sports Council is uh, above all these uh, other, you know, associations. The National Olympic Committee of Zambia, the National Paralympic Committee of Zambia, all of them have to report, you know, to the National Sports Council because they also get some funding uh, uh, from them. So uh, I would say there's a, a, a direct link a direct link, you know, uh, through to, through the the National Sports Council of Zambia, which is a, an uh, institution of uh, of the government. So although they operate under the International Olympic Charter, but they also have to directly link to uh, to you know to these government agencies. And then um, this is just a short um, um, question: the, the National Olympic Committee and the Paralympic Committee are they under one umbrella, or they operate separately? Uh, they operate separately. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much know. for the for the um, National Sports Association section now. And this is quite brief and there've been the, um, the sustainable development goals in Africa. We have the agenda um, 2063, which is modeled to fix the um, UN, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And I know each country also, you know, has its own national agenda that is often you know, malleable or made to suit these um, sustainable development goals and then the um, Africa Agenda in 2063. Now, the question is, has the sports sector in Zambia, especially at the national level or the National Sports Association, consider the SDGs, which is Sustainable Development Goals, or sustainability or sustainable development in their programs? 
you can take it from anywhere, whether the ministry, if you are aware, or the national sports associations. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, that is something that is um, very pronounced, more especially in this era, the sustainable development goals. So um, even in our policy, they are you know pronounced. And um, I have seen sports associations uh, in my country and even sports, uh, sports organizations uh, work towards, you know, contributing to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. You know, like, for example, taking care of the environment. I've seen sports associations create days, you know, uh, in the month, maybe where they can, you know, take care of the environment, uh, contribute to making sure that the environment is safe, contributing, uh, ensuring that the environment is clean. I've also seen uh, sports associations in my country participate in uh, tree, tree planting, you know, all those programs directed to, you know, improving the uh, uh, our environment. So I would say the sustainable development goals, yes, uh, they are there, but uh, I would say probably the programs are not uh, very well organized because uh, they don't seem to happen, you know, like uh, uh, regularly and in an organized manner. So I would say maybe more work has to be done uh, on those and, uh, you know, sport also has to be used as a tool to contribute to these, uh, you know, many uh, development agendas. So uh, I would say more attention also has to be given. It has been done before, but I would say uh, still more could be done. Yeah, so um, I mean, just to wrap it up, do you think sports can play a role to ensure sustainable development? And if yes, how? Then this is your personal opinion. And uh, what do you think about it? The, especially when the SDGs outline the environment, the social, and then the economic dimensions as the encompassing dimensions so far as achieving the SDGs is concerned. Yes, so, uh, you know, sport just creates a natural platform for, you know, engaging uh, a lot of people. You know, there are some um, issues maybe which you may not just want to discuss outside sports, but whenever there's sports, could be any kind of sport, you bring people together, maybe to a sports match, or you bring people together for exercise, it just creates that, you know, free environment where you can uh, discuss and engage people into so many, many issues. So personally, I feel, yes, sport has got uh, so much power. If it could be used uh, strategically, it could help, you know, uh, maybe sensitize people on the on taking care of the environment. Of the environment, it could be used as a tool to sensitize people on how they could uh, attain good health. It could be used as a platform where you no know, issues of poverty could be discussed, issues of crime could be discussed. So it can, you know, uh, create that platform which uh, really can uh, uh, help uh, attain some of the sustainable development. Because so personally, I feel. Uh, it has the power to do that as long as um, it is well structured and uh, well uh, organized. As well as it's well structured and well organized, sports can really play a role. And I think it's a new research area. A lot of people are looking at what role can sports play. It has the power, yes, to unite, but how? So um, I think this is something that a lot of people should look at. Those who are interested in sports, you can take it from. The, um, the feasibility of these um, programs and how the rules post can play. Or in my case, which is a research I'm doing, how implementation or other mechanisms play a role to ensure that these sustainable development goals, the aspects that sports can achieve, um, is rolled out. In any case, um, do you have any other addition, any uh, additional comments or a thing to say before we wrap up? Okay. Uh, firstly, I would say I've um, I've become very interested in um, uh, the sports policy. I perceive you have a, a, a vast knowledge uh, in this field. And, just, uh, just just small knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, probably uh, uh, short uh, soon. Uh, I'll engage you. Probably we could have a discussion where you could uh, share welcome, with us and yeah. many people who follow us uh, on issues of uh, sports policy. You could yeah. advise uh, many people uh, around the world, you know, how best maybe to come up with sports policies and how they could yeah. be designed to ensure that uh, sport uh, improves. So uh, I've really become very much interested uh, in that. So uh, soon I'll engage you so that we could create maybe another platform where we could share yeah. 
uh, aspects uh, in that uh, in that field. But uh, thank you very much for having uh, invited me. Uh, it has been a pleasure just to share, you know, issues uh, surrounding sport. There are so many things uh, in sport and reading. Sport is a powerful tool which um, if used strategically could uh, change so many aspects of our, of our society. Well, thank you so much, Nicholas, and it was great having you. I hope we have some time, as you mentioned, to talk more about um, sport policy in Africa, not only policy, but also implementation. And I think the discussion was great. It was very in-depth, and I hope that um, um, all our listeners learned has, or have learned um, something new uh, or sports in Zambia. Uh, on that note, thank you for the time and have a good day. Bye.